Okay. So let's continue to talk about stereo and regioselectivity. We'll start with the idea of regioselectivity. Um, in today's folder, I put a table of the different reactants and whether they were Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov and what their stereochemistry was. I didn't get a chance to print them out to bring them to class, but it's there. Um, so if you want to make sure that when you draw your own table, you have them all, they're there. But for regioselectivity, again, the idea here is there are two parts. The selectivity part means that there must be, we must make two products at least, and one has to be the major product. So we can't be selective if we only make one product, and we can't be selective if there's two products, but they're exactly 50-50. And we'll go through examples of that. So selectivity, you've got to have two products, and one has to be the major. Now, the difference between stereo and regioselectivity is regioselectivity means that we have um, the products. What's the relationship between them? The products are structural isomers. And so that means they have different IUPAC names. What it also means is that regioselectivity is going to come from whether the reaction is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. And just because a reaction is Markovnikov doesn't always mean that the reaction is regioselective. So um, as we're going through this, we'll start with the idea of what isn't going to be regioselective ever. Okay, and so we said yesterday that reagents like these where I'm adding two BRs, two H's, or two OH's, since I'm adding the same group to the double bond, they can't be Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov, and so they will only give one product. So if I take, for instance, this, if I take, for instance, even this cyclohexene ring, and I treated any one of those reagents, let's just say for the sake of argument that I add BR2 to it, that as far as structural isomers go, I'm going to add two BRs to the double bond, and whether I add them this way or this way, whichever way I add them, I'm going to get the same product, and so this reaction is not regioselective. simply because there's no, there's no more than one product. So if you only make one product, which you will for all of these cases, then the reaction will never be regioselective. Because okay. I'm only making one product. So this is what I call a symmetrical reagent. So when you add a symmetrical reagent, meaning you're adding the same thing to both carbons in the double bond, you cannot be regioselective. It's also true that if the alkene was symmetrical, you couldn't be regioselective as well. So for instance, if I take cyclohexene and I react it with H plus H2O,
in this case, whether I add the H to the top carbon, well, let me, let's go ahead and do that. So I'd add an H here and an OH there, and then for the possible second product, I would add the OH here, and I would add the H there. And this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to write the possible products. So for regio selectivity, we're going to have to add the two groups, Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov, and see if we make two different products. So in this case, did I make two different products? Yes, no. No? Because these two are the same product, right? So that reaction is not regioselective as well. So whenever you have a symmetrical reagent or a symmetrical alkene, the reaction will not be regioselective automatically. Simply because it fails the selectivity criteria. Okay. Does that make does that make sense to everybody? Because in a lot of these cases, it's going to be very easy to eliminate whether the reaction is regioselective or not. And once you've once you've said, well, okay, it could be, then you're going to have to test whether it could be or not. Now, the other place where it will not be selective is if there's a 50-50 mixture. So, for instance, if I took that cyclohexene ring and I added a methyl group to this side and an ethyl group to this side and said, let's add HCl to this. Again, this is where knowing, knowing that chart, knowing what I'm adding and how I'm adding it, is going to be important. Because I would just simply say, okay, let's add the H to the top carbon. Let's add the Cl to the bottom carbon for product one. And then for the other possible product, let's add the Cl to the top and add the H to the bottom. So these are my two possible products. Are they different? Would be the first question. Well, they're different because I'm using a non-symmetrical or an asymmetrical al uh, reagent with an asymmetrical alkene. So they're going to be different products. But what, which product is the major product? Well, then I have to know that HCl adds by Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. Markovnikov, so the hydrogens go to the carbon with the most hydrogens, which in this case is carbon A or B. They both have the same number of hydrogens, which is zero. So therefore, I'm going to get a 50-50 mixture of those two products. There was no major product. They're both they're basically both major products. So in this case, this reaction is also not regioselective. It's not regioselective because I even though I made two different products I did not have a major product. I did not select one over the other. And so therefore, it's not regioselective. So I mean, we can work at this from both ends. We can say, when is the reaction not going to be regioselective? 
And it's not going to be rhesio selective if we have a symmetrical reagent, if we have a symmetrical alkene, or if we get two products and they are 50 50. In other words, there was no Markovnikov product because they both are. We can work at it from the positive end and say, okay, when is the reaction going to be regio selective? When I make two different products and one is the major product. And the reaction is Markovnikov or anti Markovnikov, favoring one or the other. So, what would be an example of a reaction that is regioselective? Well, now let's take that alkene and let's add HCl to it. Do I have two possible products? And the only way to find out if we have two possible products is to add the H and the Cl Markovnikov, well that was anti-Markovnikov, but now add it, Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov. Or simply add it, add H to carbon A, chlorine to B, and vice versa. Look at the two products. Are they different? Are they structural isomers? Yes. So criteria number one has been met. I have a reaction that has two possible products. Now, is one of those two the major product? And the answer would be yes, because if this is A and this is B, the major product is B. And why is the major product B? Because the reaction goes by Markovnikov addition. So again, if you have a reaction that doesn't go by Markovnikov addition or anti-Markovnikov addition, you cannot be regioselective. But if, you, if you're looking at this, if you're beginning to think about that, you, you would say, but wait, those are the reactions that were symmetrical. Yes. That's why we say symmetrical reagents won't be regioselective. So if I made this reaction, and if I said, okay, now let's go ahead and do this same reaction with HBr and peroxide, the reaction we did yesterday, and again, this would be this would be up here our major product. If I go ahead and do that reaction, I would say, okay, let's go ahead and do anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr. Let's go ahead and do Markovnikov addition of HBr. Draw my two possible products. Is one of those favored? Is one of those going to be the major product? Yes, because the reaction is anti-Markovnikov, and so that means that product A would be the major product. So I made two products that are structural isomers. Did I select one over the other? Yes, this is regioselective. So both of these are examples of reactions that are indeed regioselective. And there is a way to kind of think of a flow chart of different questions you can ask to get to the answer. I thought I had that somewhere. I know I've done it in the past, that I've sort of created a flow chart where you could, the first question you might ask is, is the reagent symmetrical? And then if the answer is no, then it's not regio, then is the alkene symmetrical? If the answer, well, sorry, if the answer is yes on symmetrical, then no, it's not and then you keep working your way down. Did I make two different products? Yes. Is the reaction Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Yes. Is one of those two products the major product? Or are they 50-50? 50-50 would be no. So you can kind of get a sense of how you want to ask these reactions, but 
basically what I have, and it's and I'll move the folder or I'll copy the folder of problems from a week from last Friday. There were a whole bunch of problems writing the mechanisms as well as then writing products and telling me whether the reaction was was uh, regio or stereo selective, both or neither. The folder basically goes through this sequence of alkenes. Cyclohexene, methylcyclohexene, methyl ethyl cyclohexene for every single reagent. Because as you're doing that, you're saying, oh, symmetrical reagent, not regioselective. Could be regioselective, depending on the reagent. Won't be regioselective if the reaction is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov, because each number, each carbon in the double bond has the same number of hydrogens, zero. Now, all the, all the reactions are not there. I looked and I seem to be missing a page, like for cis-hydroxylation and hydrogenation. But I'll, I'll add those in. So the reason I did it this way was to kind of, you could see the pattern developing of when it's going to be regio and when it's not. Okay. So you have to take each reaction individually in order to determine if it's regio or not. Some HBR additions would be regio selective. Some HBR additions are not going to be regio selective because we have a symmetrical alkene. Or we have a situation like this where same number of hydrogens. Does that kind of make sense? So we'll come back. Let's, do, let's talk about stereoselectivity, and then we can talk about a problem where it's either regio, stereo, both, or neither. Now, stereoselectivity basically means the same thing as before. So if I say a reaction is stereoselective, the problem with stereoselective is, number one, it's got to be selective. So the selective part means that you need to make two products or more. So we could say at least two products and you must have a major product. So that's the same as selectivity before. 50-50 doesn't count. But then what does stereo mean? Stereo means that those two products are stereoisomers of each other. Well, so at this point, you know, we're, we're kind of late in the semester here. How many different types of stereoisomers have we looked at in the past? Cis-trans was a form of stereo. Those two were stereoisomers. Enantiomers. Those are stereoisomers. And what's left? Diastereomers. Diastereomers are we'll go into this mode. So then the stereoisomers are either cis trans enantiomers or diastereomers. Now this is going to be a little bit trickier from the standpoint of there are certain things that we can immediately eliminate as not ever being stereoselective. So let's start with that. What's not stereoselective? A reaction that is not going to be stereoselective 
is going to be one that gives me 50-50 cis trans. So whenever we do a reaction that gives us 50-50 addition of cis and trans, it will not be stereoselective. I could say, give me an example of a reaction that is 50-50 cis trans. And if that was a rhetorical question, I would be answering it right now. Since I'm not, that's a question for you. So what are examples of the reactions that are not 50-50? Or sorry, that are 50-50. That are 50-50. This is where having a chart would be really helpful right now. Hint. Give me an example. Um, adding HBr and hydrogen peroxide. HBr, hydrogen peroxide. 50-50 cis-trans. What else? What? Is that 50-50? The mercuration, demercuration? You might want to check your chart. Mercuration, demercuration does this. What does that mean? 100% trans. Caitlin? Okay, that's about three different reactions, so you could choose one. Okay, H plus H2O would be another example. So we've got HCl, or, well, we didn't have HCl, but we had HBr with hydrogen peroxide. We have HCl, we have H plus H2O. I can sum all three of those reactions up as I did yesterday. Julia, you have one. Yeah, just I'll go through a or carbocation or what about HBr H2O2? The one we just did yesterday. Radical. Radical. So if they go through a carbocation or a radical or, more generally, any sp2 intermediate, they will not be stereoselective because they will give 50-50 cis and trans. Now, that eliminates those right off the bat. Also, the other molecules that are eliminated, the other products or reactions products that would be eliminated as not being stereoselective are you cannot be stereoselective if the product has 0 to 1 chiral centers. So if you make a product with no chiral centers, it cannot be stereoselective. Because I only made one stereoisomer. If, on the other hand, it has one chiral center, then that means the two products that you could be making are R and S. And the general rule in organic chemistry is 
that you cannot make an optically active mixture, meaning you cannot make a non-50-50 mixture of enantiomers unless you use a chiral molecule as a reagent. So, in all the, and, and where have we done that? Where have we started with a chiral molecule and made a chiral molecule? Or started with a non-chiral molecule and made a chiral molecule? Well, in lab, we started with a non-chiral molecule and we made a chiral molecule, but what had to happen there? The chiral enzymes in the yeast are what caused the reaction to become not 50-50, not racemic. But if in class, what have we done? Well, we've started with a chiral halide and done SN2 on it to make a chiral product. But we've never taken an achiral molecule and made a non-racemic mixture in class, in lecture. So if you only make one chiral center, by definition, it's got to be 50-50. And if it's 50-50, it ain't stereoselective. Okay. So we can cut right to the chase. If you're only making one chiral center, that reaction will never be stereoselective, at least now in this class. Why? Because I didn't use a chiral reagent to make the molecule chiral, to make the product chiral. And, some of the que and there were a couple of questions in Piazza for Chapter 12 that people asked, and one of them boiled down to doing the reaction, seeing how many chiral centers you had, because it said, for, this, for the, if these three reactions, which one makes the achiral product, which means no chiral centers, which one makes a racemic mixture, and which one made a mixture of diastereomers. And so it was all just about counting the number of chiral carbons at the end. Does that make sense to everybody? So if you got no chiral centers, you have no stereoisomers to choose from. You have just one. If you have one chiral center, by definition, it's going to be 50-50. 50-50 is not selective. Are there any other things that will not be stereoselective? Now everything else is going to be stereoselective. This is where it gets a little dicey. So we said anything that's 50-50, cis and trans, can't be stereoselective. And then we have to look at the product. If the product only has 0 to 1 chiral centers, it will not be stereoselective either. Okay. When will the reaction be stereoselective? All right, so let's choose a reaction that is not 50-50. Give me a reaction that's not 50-50. If it's 100%, if it's still like it's 100% trans. Well, let's talk about that. So give me a reagent. Give me a reagent that's not 50-50, and, we'll, and let's talk about that. You can jump in if you'd like. Stage three uh, I should probably, let me add that up here. H plus and ROH is not, is 50-50. Because it goes through a carbocation as well. Okay. I need a reaction that's either 100% cis or 100% trans. BR2. All right, let's add BR2 to this alkene. Now, first, my first question, is this regio selective? Is this reaction regio selective? No. Because 
it's a symmetrical alkene, and it's a symmetrical reagent. So it is definitely not regioselective. But is it stereoselective? Okay, for stereoselectivity, what we have to do is we have to write the two possible products for this reaction. Looking at how does Br2 add? 100% trans. Now, just because it adds 100% trans, this will be my major product, right? Adding the two BRs, 100% trans. But what is the other possible product? The other possible product would be to add the two bromines, cis. And this is what gets confusing because the people who came up with regio and stereo selective, which has to go back into the 60s, 50s, and 60s, because there was a time when books weren't including this in their, in their chapters, and the only place you, had to, you could find it was in the books from the 50s or 60s. When I first, when I first started teaching, one of the people who was teaching with me was constantly on stereo and regio selective, and they, he would give problems, and then they're like, I, students would come to me and go, I can't figure this out. And then I'd be like, well, I can't, I don't quite understand the pattern here myself before I gave it some thought. And then went back to one of the older books, and it's like, oh, okay. This is, this is why we're using selectivity. This is why we're talking about numbers of chiral centers. They, didn't ha they did not come up with a, with a term if it was 100-0. Right. Would have been nice if they would have used specific for that, but that's something else. So stereoselective means just majority to 100% to zero exclusive. So in this case... Is this a possible product? Yes. Is it formed? Yes, at 0%, which means it ain't formed. But they still count the reaction to be selective if it's 100, 0. So you have to take into account the fact that the product that we are not writing because it's not formed is still possible. This is still a possible product, and am I selecting one over the other? Yes, 100 to 0. So in this case, are there two possible stereoisomeric products? Yes. What's the relationship between those two products? They are diastereomers because one chiral carbon has the same configuration and one chiral carbon has the opposite configuration. So they are diastereomers. I am selecting one diastereomer over another. Yes, I'm selecting it 100, 0, but I'm still selecting it. So therefore, it is stereo selective. Um, like an example, do you have to write the enantiomer of the no, you wouldn't have to write this product. I wouldn't be looking for it. But in order to answer the reaction that it's stereoselective, you need to real you need to realize it's there, that it is a possible product. But if we just write like at least one, like we don't have the um, cyclohexane, the bromine goes back immediately as well. It would still be okay. Uh, what's the other product you want to write? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, let's, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So for this product, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. The bromines have to be trans. It doesn't matter if it's bold dash, dash bold, as long as it's trans. Over here, that product is not formed, but we need to recognize it's there to say, yes, 
this reaction is regiosolite. Because there are two possible diastereomers as products, two possible stereoisomers, and I've chosen one. Okay, I've chosen 100 to 0, but I've still chosen it. That's what I mean. I said I was going to teach a class completely wrong one day just to see if anybody caught me. Now, does everybody kind of see the, the idea? Because this is confusing. It's like, but wait, that product isn't formed, but yet it's still possible? Yeah, it is. So the other rule that we have up here is um, basically let's look at the positive side. The positive side is it can be stereoselective if, number one, the reaction is 100% cis or 100% trans. Is BR 100% cis and 100% trans? Yes. So checkbox number one. Did I make a product that has two or more chiral centers? Right. If I'm going the opposite here, zero to one chiral center would be not stereoselective, but two chiral centers or more would be. Did I make a molecule down here that has two chiral centers? Yes. So is it stereoselective? Yes. So there's a number of ways that we can actually determine stereoselectivity or not stereoselectivity. But if we want to say stereoselective, number one, the reaction's got to be 100% cis or trans. But then secondly, the product that you make must be or must have two chiral centers. And if that's the case, the reaction would be stereoselective. So I'm looking at it from both. Whichever one works for you, that's the one you want to pick and use, criteria-wise. Does that make sense? All right, so this one is stereoselective. It is not regioselective. All right, so let's go to, let's do another one. No, let's, do, let's leave the methyl group off for the moment. Let's do another cyclohexene. Give me another reagent that's 100% cis or 100% trans. Or whatever. Mercury acetate in water, then NaBH4. So that's, remember, that was a two-step mechanism. We added mercury in water first, then replaced the mercury with NaBH4. The way I write that reaction is I will say those two reagents, then you add the second reagent. In the book, they'll sometimes talk about a one and then a two over the arrow. Okay, good reaction. So I forget. What does mercury add to the double bond? Well, first of all, is this regioselective? Is this re reaction regioselective? No, why not? The symmetrical alkene. So it can't be regioselective, so now is it stereoselective? So what does mercury, acetate, water, and sodium borohydride add to the double bond? What two groups?
I'm going to add an H and an OH. Okay, I'm adding H and OH. How does it add? Hundred percent trans. Okay. So there would be my product. How many chiral centers did I make? I'm still waiting for the right answer. Nope, still waiting. I've heard two and one. Zero. There are no chiral centers in that molecule. But wait, you wrote bold and dashed wedges. That doesn't guarantee that I got a chiral center. Because up here, what's my other hydrogen on? The bold wedge. Is that chiral? No way. How about down here? It's got an H and an OH. True. What other two groups? Uh, the other two groups differ? No, because remember, if I go here and here, CH2, CH2 end up in the same place. That's not chiral. So I have zero chiral centers. Uh, stereo selective? Nope. So this one is not stereo selective. All right, how about when I put a methyl group on there? And I use mercury acetate and water and sodium borohydride. Now, the problems will be framed as write the major product of the reaction or write the products of the reaction, circle the major one. You're going to have to indicate what the major product is. And then you're going to have to tell me is the reaction regio, stereo, both, or neither. So let's just deal with stereo selectivity. In order to do that, I need to know my chart. So mercury acetate, water, NaBH4, what am I, what am I adding? H and OH. How, Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov, 100% cis, 100% trans, 50-50. 100% trans. So the H and the OH have added 100% trans. How many chiral centers? Zero. Well, it's that chiral center R or S. What's group number one? OH. Group number four? CH3. CH2 versus CH2 tied. CH2 versus CH2 tied. CH2 at the same. Those two groups are the same. No chiral centers. No chiral centers method number two. What is this? It's a mere plane of symmetry. Does it cut through the carbon with the OH and the methyl group on it? 
Yes. Is that carbon chiral? No. So there are zero chiral centers. Is that reaction stereoselective? It's not stereoselective. Is it regioselective? It is regioselective. Why? Because adding the H and the OH both ways, Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov does give two different products. Right? Because the other possible product would be the anti-Markovnikov, which would have been to add the H here and the OH down there. That would have been that would have been um, anti-Markovnikov. Those are two different products. Which leads me to something that I have to clarify. So in the formation of the major Markovnikov product, the reaction was definitely not stereoselective. We all agreed on that because there were no chiral centers. What about in the formation of the anti-Markovnikov product, which is the minor product? But when I form the minor product, what is that reaction stereoselective? Yes? Because how many chiral centers did I generate in that molecule? Two. And because the reaction's 100% trans, I would have gotten that and two chiral centers makes the formation of the minor product is stereoselective. So when I ask you about whether the reaction is regio, stereo, both, or neither, I'm going to have to specifically say only consider the major product of the reaction. Because otherwise you could say, but in the formation of the minor product, it is stereo selective. So I'm going to have to say, is this reaction regio, stereo, both, or neither? And I want you to consider only the formation of the major product in making those, those judgments. Okay. But stereoselectivity then can be boiled down to, do I know my reactions, whether they're 100% cis or 100% trans? And do I know if I make more than one chiral center? So those are the two things that we're going to have to that we're going to have to apply in order to determine is it stereoselective. Okay. So this is why knowing what we're adding, how we're adding it, and how we're adding it's important. It also, we couldn't have done this set of reactions until we learned about the difference between an antimers and diastereomers. So if I said I give you that reaction because, again, in that problem set that I will move up after class, I'll move it into today's folder, I gave you a cyclohexene, a methyl cyclohexene, and a methyl, oh, actually, I gave you a dimethyl cyclohexene, and then I gave you a methyl ethyl cyclohexene. So I gave you four, the same molecules over and over again with each set of reagents. And is it regio or stereoselective? So you have to apply that rule. And I don't remember if I applied the rule or not because I might have pointed out that the minor product could have been stereoselective. But in this case, if we look at that, is it regioselective? No, why not? Because adding the H and the OH, in this case, this adds H and OH how? anti-Markovnikov. There is no Markovnikov anti-Markovnikov because the carbons 
in the double bond have the same number of hydrogens, which is zero. So it will not be regioselective because I'll add H and OH 50% of the time and OH and H 50% of the time. But is it stereoselective? If I add my H and my OH, oh, I forget. How does it add the H and the OH? 100% cis. If I add my H and my OH this way, 100% cis, did I, how many chiral centers did I make? Two. Okay, the reaction was 100% cis. Two chiral centers. Is it stereoselective? Yes. Okay. So this is why I this is why I did that problem set with all these rings is simply because every problem is its own problem. You have to evaluate each one on whether it's regio or stereo. And there is kind of a pattern to this, but as you recognize the pattern, you're reinforcing our rules. So what I'll do is I'll sort of summarize this maybe in a flow chart type thing, and I'll put it online. I will move those problems up, and I may write ones with cis-hydroxylation and hydrogenation if they're not there. I thought they were, but I, I will do that. As you're going through this, if you have any questions... Throw them up on Piazza. You know, if you need some get away from family time, throw them up on Piazza. I might need that as well, so I'll try and answer your questions. And um, otherwise, bring questions back on Monday because uh, that we'll have class, and then we'll mop up the rest of this that doesn't quite make sense. No. No, you will not get the chart, so you're going to have to commit that to memory. You too.